do the math, and then let's get a ban on fracking. And let's not only ban fracking in New York, let's assert police powers control over what goes on in the headwaters of New York. We not only have to ban fracking in New York, we've got to stop it in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is of great public health concern. This should be for everyone that drinks water in the city of Binghamton. Every restaurant owner, anybody that goes to a restaurant in the city of Binghamton. You should be calling the Broome County Emergency Services and find out what they're doing to make sure the water is safe. Now this is a complicated issue because the problem is happening in another state. We don't have any jurisdiction in Pennsylvania yet what's going on there is affecting our water. This is a very serious problem and we all need to have collectively as a community a community discussion about this and you know personally I'm scared and I'm angry and I think we should really do something about number one making sure we get a ban on fracking in New York State we don't want to repeat this I mean we already have a city of 47,000 people a New York City of 47,000 people whose drinking water is at grave risk from poisoning from fracking operations in Pennsylvania and there's not one media outlet in the city I've been telling them for two weeks and they haven't done a story once, not one story. So Binghamton Mayor Matt Ryan has ordered special testing of the city's drinking water to determine if fracking operations upstream in Pennsylvania are impacting the water supply. Ryan says he's responding to the concerns of a councilman in Great Bend, Pennsylvania, who believes that surface spills of fracking fluids in PA could eventually make their way to the Susquehanna River. Unlike other municipalities in Broome County, which use well water, Binghamton takes its supply directly from the river, just east of the Tompkins Street Bridge. Ryan says the large volume of water in the Susquehanna makes it unlikely that any frack water contaminants would register in a test, but he thinks the issue should be investigated anyway. What I'm more concerned about is, is there a pattern of behavior in Pennsylvania that could impact our water supply for the future? And that's why I'm going to ask the Department of Health to get involved and anybody else they think needs to investigate this. While waiting for a response from the DOH, Binghamton plans to do a special and additional test to look for fracking-related contaminants. The city already does routine and stringent testing of the drinking water, and to date, no chemicals attributable to fracking have been found. So you should also call Calvin Stovall of the Press and Sun Bulletin. Call Sue Neubauer. She's the news director of Fox 40. You should call YNN. I don't know their news director. They're based in Syracuse. But give YNN a call and find out how come they're not covering the story. Let's call WSKG while we're at it. There's the number. Give them a call and ask them how come they're not telling you that the Bingham, Binghamton City water supply has potentially been corrupted by fracking operations in Pennsylvania. Don't they think that's newsworthy? You know, Julia Child's latest recycled content from 1960 that's newsworthy for WSKG Woo! you know the garbage that they put on TV is really uh, not just WSKG but all of the garbage on TV from a satellite somewhere it's not local it's not relevant and real relevant news they're not telling you and give them a call and find out how come they're not covering the story you tell them Bill Houston sent you so that's where we are today, folks. Um, let's, lastly, I want to leave you with this. What's the definition of safe? Question is, is Binghamton's water safe to drink? Yes or no? Should be an easy question. Everybody from the major news says it's safe. Well, let's look at the dictionary definition. Does the dictionary definition of the word safe mean that actual harm has been done? What do you think? Turns out it does not say that. Safe says 
free from the risk of harm. That was five years ago before fracking operations started in Pennsylvania. Our water was safe from the perils of fracking, but it's not safe now. So there's another threshold bes besides where we're at right now, and that is proof of actual contamination. And that's where they say it becomes newsworthy. If somebody dies from drinking Binghamton water, or if somebody gets sick from dr drinking Binghamton water, that's when it becomes a news story. No, that's not acceptable. And let's give you a little analogy to make that a little bit more clear. Now first let me say this. All true crimes have victims with injury. Now today, there are many people jailed each year for victimless crimes. I truly believe this is wrong. Still, there is a concept in law called reckless endangerment, where by someone's actions, they put the lives of one or many people at grave and immediate risk of harm. This is a proper application of the police powers. So let's say a man goes up to a 20-story building, and there's a balcony up there, and he holds an infant over the balcony. Ha, 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 and he's laughing, holding the infant over there. Is that safe? He pulls the infant back. That man is likely going to go to jail for endangering a child because that was an unsafe thing to do. The child's okay, thank God for that. But that was a bloody stupid thing and not very, uh, not very smart and safe. He endangered that child by doing that. But the child was okay. And what happens if I went to a shopping mall and I pulled out a gun and started shooting around randomly? Blap, 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 blap. Didn't hit anybody. Nobody got hurt. What's going to happen to me? That was safe. Nobody got hurt. It was safe, right? No. No, it wasn't safe. It's bloody stupid. It's a stupid thing to do. And the person that goes shooting in a shopping mall is probably going to go to jail for endanger reckless endangerment, some felony crime, even though nobody got hurt because it wasn't safe to do that. Fracking within the water supply of a major New York town of 47,000 people, that's not safe. That's a bloody stupid thing. That should be a criminal act, I believe. So if you believe that the fracking going on upstream of the city of Binghamton is a criminal act, I encourage you to get involved in the fight against fracking. I'm involved in yoga and Buddhism and different forms of metaphysics, and it's really not good to define yourself in terms of that which you hate, that which you don't like, that which you don't want. That's really not what we want to be doing. We really don't want to be fighting fracking. But that is the immediate threat. This is the biggest environmental threat to our health, safety, and well-being of this generation and future generations and every living being in this river basin that I've ever seen in my life. And fortunately, this is also the largest resistance movement that has arisen that I've ever seen in my life as well. We believe that high volume horizontal hydraulic fracking is an accident prone, inherently dangerous industrial process with risks that include catastrophic and irremediable environmental damage. And these risks cannot be properly resolved, nor can they be mitigated. We believe that Governor Cuomo and this agency, the Department of Environmental Conservation, has repeatedly turned a deaf ear to the petition of New York scientists, economists, medical professionals, and ordinary citizens. We believe that it is wrong to shatter the bedrock of New York State and inject it with toxic chemicals. And here comes the heads. And for this part, if you are so moved, but feel free to put your fist in the air as I tell my human anatomy students, a fist is the size of a human heart. So this represents our love, our courage, and our spirit of resistance. Take it, Isaac. If Governor Cuomo, if if Governor Cuomo, Governor Cuomo permits high volume, permits high volume, 
Horizontal. Horizontal. Hydraulic fracking. Hydraulic fracking. In any part of New York. In any part of New York. I pledge. I pledge to join with others. To join with others. To engage. To engage. In nonviolent. In nonviolent. Acts of protest. Acts of protest. Including demonstrations, including demonstrations, and other nonviolent actions, and other nonviolent actions, as my conscience needs me, as my conscience needs me, I make this pledge, I make this pledge, in order, in order, to prevent, to prevent the destruction, the destruction, and poisoning, and poisoning of New York's, of New York's. Water, water, air, air, and food systems, and food systems on which, on which life, life, health, health, and economic prosperity, and economic prosperity all depend, all depend, including, including that of future generations, that of future generations. So I encourage you to get involved, pick up your phone and call one of the numbers, call the uh, city officials, call Donna Lupardo and ask her what she's going to do to make sure the city of Binghamton's water is, is clear and, and free and safe from chemicals from fracking. Call up Senator Tom Libus and let him know that there's 98 unconventional wells in our water supply right now and what he's doing to make sure that the water supply for 47,000 people is safe. Um, and once again, call the media. Call Calvin Stovall. Let's start with him. Sue Neubauer and Greg Catlin over at WBNG. Can't forget Greg Catlin. Call every news director. Call the news director at WHRW. Call WSKG. Call every news outlet in town and demand that they inform the city of Binghamton, because what this is just public access, right? Is there any fact that I got wrong, Jeff Platsky? Are, is it false that there's 98 unconventional wells within the headwaters of the city of Binghamton? Is it false that every one of those is a likely source of contamination? Is it false that the water turned black in Great Bend Borough, f uh, 14 miles upstream of Binghamton? Is that false? You know, you say I don't have the facts, but, you know, every one of these should be very easily proven. Is it false that the city of Binghamton pulls water directly from the river? These are all facts. These are all cause for extremely serious concern for every resident of the city of Binghamton. There should be an immediate response from Binghamton Emergency Management to get this under control, to start testing our water at very regular intervals and making sure that it's safe. Make this a story, people. The press is asleep, and they're keeping this story under wraps. Everybody's keeping mum about this. Nobody wants to talk. So if you think this is an important story, like I think this is an important story, the only way this is going to raise above the news threshold is if you call. Call every day until this becomes a story and until we get together as a community and try to figure out what we can do to keep our water safe for this generation and for future generations. Thank you. I'm Bill Houston. Really get involved in this fight against fracking. Um, you know, we really need to be putting solar panels on our roofs. That's the most important thing. But um, we're all being distracted now by this, uh, this industrial invasion that lined up at the border of New York right now. It's already affecting our water supply, as we've told you in this show. Um, there's every town has a local group. Just ask around. Uh, Investel, it's Vestal Residents for Safe Energy. Uh, NIRAD is kind of a group with a regional scope. You can check out NIRAD.org and see pointers there to other local groups. We've got two, two CAF, T O U C A F, Town of Union, Citizens Against Fracking. That's uh, Union, Endicott, Endwell. 
uh, Town of Union Against Fracking. Um, that also covers Johnson City, the village of Johnson City. Uh, we've got the Concerned Residents of Northern Broome. Just do a Google search of them. That uh, covers several towns in Northern Broome. We've got Raft, uh, Residents Against Fracking Tioga. That's for Tioga County. We've got Sea Care in Shenango County. Um, and we've got Citizen Action of New York. That's based in Binghamton. They're doing a lot of good work, too, around the fracking issue. Um, if you uh, need any help, if you need pointers, I'm very, very busy. Um, it, it's best to send me an email, William A. Houston. It's spelled H-U-S-T-O-N at gmail.com. If you email me, it'll be, be uh, easier for me to respond to you. Um, if you really need to speak with me, you can call 607-321-7846. That's 607-321-7846. It may take me a couple of days to get back to you, but I will get back to you if you call and you can give me comments about the show. Or if you have any questions about fracking or how to get involved in this fight, um, I will try to help you. But once again, phone call is should be a last resort. Please email me uh, first. Um, and there's the pledge to resist fracking. Please visit don'tfracknewyork.org, www.don'tfracknyorg slash pledge. Take the pledge. Also, we need landowners to sign up at realnys. That's realnys.org. Um, sign up your land if you are a landowner and you are against fracking. realnys.org. That's about it, folks. Uh, it was a pretty heavy show. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned some things um, over and out. And we're going to try to uh, end on a little upbeat notice as we roll these press contacts. Please get that pen out. Write down at least two or three of these press contacts if you can. And call them up and tell them to please tell the citizens of the city of Binghamton that their water has been fracked. There's active fracking going on in their water source. This is an urgent story, and the people of Binghamton deserve to know this. Okay, folks, see you later. This is Bill Houston, over and out.